Hello all, Old Geek here, and uh, seeing as I've got some decent feedback on uh, my little browse through Dragon Magazine issue one, um, let's have a look at Dragon Magazine issue two. Now my computer's chugging a little bit, um, burping away in the corner, and I've had a few of those sort of like, you know, the Microsoft swirls where it's thinking, so I don't know how the, quite this, how this is going to turn out, but uh, you knows but let, let's let's see how it goes cover art right i was quite critical of the cover art on the first dragon magazine article and i can already see that the colors on this piece are better um it's still quite crude the, the tree's okay um inspired by a conan the barbarian type figure Looking very pensive and stern. Dragon, the magazine of fantasy swords and sorcery and science fiction gaming. New, Gardner Fox, The Shadow of a Demon. This was released in August 1976. So, we begin with an advert for Gen Con 9. August 20th, 21st and 22nd. Special guest, Fritz Lieber, or Lieber, however you pronounce his surname. And I think he, he I think he says Liber, but uh, in English, in uh, this side of the Atlantic, we would say Lieber. But because I did German, and I love you in German, is Ich liebe dich. So, um, is Liber sort of the American adaptation of the pronunciation? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Dragon Rumbles. Welcome to the pages of the fastest growing magazine in the hobby. Well, it would have gone from zero to however many they sold for the first uh, edition. Um, welcome back to those of you that were here last issue. I trust that you liked what you saw last time. Um, yeah, it was interesting. It was certainly uh, nostalgic. I'm not going to read all of it, though, because we'll be here all day. So they started off publishing bi-monthly. The first one was June 1976. This was August 1976. The formatting is variable, shall we say. But, of course, these are the days before um, decent word processors, so... I have a nice fresh cup of tea for this. Monkish combat in the arena of promotion. Okay, since the concept, conception of the monk as a D&D &D character, is this where they're introducing the fighting for a level? Obviously, it is based on reality, because if you do a martial art, you m most martial arts, you have to compete to advance. I had to when I got my, uh, my downgrade. I had to go there and have five fights and win all five. Um, had I not won them all, I wouldn't have got the automatic promotion. First time I went for my downgrade, I won my first four and I lost my fifth fight. I got some points towards the next level, but that was auto promotion gone. Three of the fights were one after the other with no breather. It was my last fight I lost it on against a young lad who was bigger than me. Okay, um, so martial arts rules. Okay, fair enough. I'm, it'll take a while to um, unpick these because such are the way um, rules were written back then. Um, to, I will read a little bit. To enter the arena for combat, multiply strength and constitution, then add ten times your level to get damage points. Okay. There's something to be said for basing new rules on mechanics that are already in the game. Yeah, um, these were um, war gamers, no, uh, no strangers to a few mathematical sort of adaptations and little rule systems and little subsystems and how they all gel. Of course, AD and D had multiple subsystems. Um, 
sometimes you rolled on a d20, sometimes you rolled on d percent. Thieves skills were done on separate, uh, were done separately. Saving throws and attack rolls were all done on different matrices, different subsystems. Sometimes you rolled high, sometimes you rolled low. It made it easy to mod, though, didn't it? And that's why they're able to do things like this, little modifications. So it's all to do, yeah. It's it's, it's your kung fu influence um, with all the block blocks and head kicks and fists and whatever. That's not my field of the martial arts. <laughs> I did uh, I did judo, so all throws, strangles, arm bars, foot sweeps, counters, pins, that sort of stuff. I know nothing at all about striking and kicking. Nothing at all. Part two of uh, the Gnome Cash, uh, a story begun in the first epi uh, edition that I still haven't read yet. I did say I would last time I looked through making last video, so I do need to, but I haven't read it yet. Watch for TD number four, December 76, Empire of the Petal Throne issue. Okay, okay. Do apologise for the little cut there. My eyes weren't focusing at all, and I think it might be because my glasses are a little bit murky. I've given them a clean. Let's see what happens. Um, small band of explorers. Search for the Forbidden Chamber conclusion. Okay, this is another um, bit of fiction. I'm not going to sit and read it all. If I get the urge to read these, I will. Not a, not a big reader of fiction. Not anymore. I listen. I listen to audio books, but I don't read the books. Could be. I think I might just need new glasses because uh, it's making me feel dizzy. Right. Um, mapping the dungeons is f finding new DMs, finding groups, and that's a much bigger list than the first. Um, edition so uh, it's gaining some steam talking about gen con tournament planned 100 entrants i did the um cthulhu masters at the, uh, uk games expo and yeah we get last time i was there six or seven tables seven or eight people to a table decent turnout always good fun I do annoy you by adjusting my glasses ears because I'm, I'm struggling to focus. Uh, adverts, adverts. More. I remember seeing Der Kriegspielers in the uh, in the first uh, first one. Um, obviously happy with the results they got. I am still struggling to focus, so I've put a side light on now. It's so hopefully it'll give me a bit more light on the screen. Um, it made my head shine as well on the video. Right, hints for D and D judges, part three: The Dungeons by Joe Fisher. Never heard of you before. For once, it is the author, not the judges, having trouble getting started. Okay. But when it comes to ideas for improving the dungeons, the possibilities are endless. Yes, they are. So, in order, I will try to deal with the following areas: entrances, traps, treasures, mapping, and monsters. Okay. Yeah, the early game, it all focused on the dungeon, so obviously trying to keep the dungeon fresh, keep it exciting, keep it imaginative. Um, multiple ways in and out, and... Um, over time, they became a little more natural. They became more of a clamour for dungeons to feel more logical. I certainly do tend to la um, fall on the... Uh, I enjoy the funhouse once in a while, but I prefer a dungeon to feel real now i know there are people out there who say real in a world of magic and uh, dragons whatever yes logic verisimilitude helps with creativity helps with player understanding helps with dm understanding helps you manage the environment so we have got uh, tables of different types of chests look at some of these results half of them are normal only half the chests are normal chests. Trap. Oh, 
Half of them are trapped. Okay. Various types of traps. Poison daggers. Poison gas. <laughs> when the chest is open, it acts as a mirror of life trapping. That's evil. Exploding chest. I thought that said two to seven damage. Two to seven dice. Ouch. When the chest is open, an enraged spectre comes out. God, they were evil. Evil. Let's keep on keep on scrolling through the new magic items. Notice here they mention hobbits. This has got to be before the time when the Tolkien estate got uh, mardy about uh, TSR using the word hobbit. And thus Halfling was born in D&D. Pipeweed of stoning? <laughs> oh, it's turned to stone, not getting stoned. <laughs> okay, right, okay. Yeah. Uh. Ah, the one, yeah, the one I'm thinking of, the yeah, the smoke with the pipeweed of tranquility. <laughs> Cause all hostile creatures to refrain from attacking. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. <laughs> okay, shadow of a demon. Um, more fiction. More fiction. The Feathered Serpent. Is this fiction as well? Or is it sort of somewhat historical? They're talking about Quetzalcoatl, the, uh, one of the main gods of the Aztecs. Hmm. Yeah, it looks to be almost like a historical thing about Aztecs, who of course were very, very nasty. A lawful evil society. Not going to read it all, but yeah, of course. <laughs> you, can't, you can't sit and read it all for a video. Miniature figurines limited, who don't seem to know how to lay out an advert, because that's appalling. <laughs> that is so difficult to read. It's just like, let's just have the largest font possible and spread it out so raw you can see us. But it looks really cheap. Creature features. Ah, lovely, lovely. Right, it's the poor colouring in again that we saw in the first uh, first edition of Dragon. But here we have the Remoraz, one of my favourite creatures. That piece of artwork in uh, G2 where one of them is swallowing a halfling. <laughs> uh, cause they, yeah, the cold worms, but they do fire damage. Look at that. Uh, three... They had a breath weapon here. I don't remember Rebrands is having a breath weapon. I remember you getting hurt when you hit them. And if you touched inside of them, you got sort of melted. But uh, I don't remember them having a breath weapon, or did they? John, use your brain. Try and wake up. You're in trouble. That, I thought it was. Look, look at the style of the figure. That is Errol Otis. 1976. Oh, well, I don't think much of your colouring on this one, but I can see the uh, the style of the art um, coming through because that is an Errol Otis style figure. Excellent. Excellent. More fiction. I guess epi uh, they thought that fiction was a really good idea for episode uh, edition number two. I would rather see more sort of articles. There's that thing about the monk, but that's a bit too much. The Ring Bearer, second edition. Fantasy Adventure War Game. Okay. Knights of the Round Table. More miniature gaming. More fiction. More fiction. Okay, this is more like it. To return to the uh, hints. Uh, those um, dungeon designing hints. You know, you saw the traps, the mirror of life stealing and all that sort of stuff. We've got uh, wandering monster tables. Water table. Just look at the sort of stuff that's on this table. Blimey. Um, I don't know much about OD&D, so I don't know what the creature's stats are like. But look at number 10. 
one to four dragon turtles. Not just a dragon turtle, but one to four of them. If they're even remotely as big and tough as they were in first edition, then <laughs> filthy, filthy. Right, um, subtables, undead. Mm -hmm. Look again. Here, number two on the subtable, Balrogs. Definitely the uh, Tolkien estate hadn't uh, come a knocking at this point. They became Thalors. Type six demon. Right. Something I have looked across here is. Over the far side, uh, uh, on, on, it's this um, paragraph here. When it comes to ordinary monsters for guarding normal treasures, D&D, Greyhawk, Blackmoor, and the creature features in the dragon have everything you need. But when it comes to those special treasures, then look to the fantasy writers like H.P. Lovecraft and his gods and demigods to help you. Or the terrible sandworms of Frank Herbert's Dune. If you... Okay, we, yeah, we're going into sci-fi. I mentioned it because I saw Star Trek. I don't like crossover games. Sorry. I know there were sci-fi inf sci influences in early D&D &D worlds, but I don't want to play those. No, no. So, um, how would you like to be walking down a corridor in the dungeon and be transported to another strange-looking corridor on the Starship Enterprise? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> Sorry. No, I wouldn't. My, um... Ability to suspend my disbelief would go pew gone. Or even wor worse, he's not using fiction at all. But in other words, your players could find the Bermuda Triangle. What causes it? Hang on. That is fiction. It's not real. It's all a big. What is real is the Barry Manilow song, Bermuda Triangle, which I used to like when I was a kid. Because my mother was a Barry Manilow fan. <laughs> Bermuda Triangle makes people disappear. Sorry. But uh, no. Um, Bermuda is real. Bermuda Triangle, the effects of it. No, don't believe it. There we have the um, artwork responsible. Uh, some familiar names in here. Jacques and Otis were to become Big names in the world. Tim Cask, Dave Sutherland, of course. Major, major influence on the look for AD&D. &D. Press release. Venerable Destruction. Big advert for a fantasy board game. Right, it's, a, it's not a serious game. It's a parody. I don't mind parodies. Big fan of paranoia. In fact, the only sci-fi I'll really play is when it's taking the mickey. Star Command, a miniature rule book for fighting. More space stuff. Go away with your space stuff. Okay, this is what I want to see. A new D&D character class. The Alchemist. Now, a lot of these character classes that were in early Dragon magazines, I have heard they're better used as NPCs. And, yeah. I think that having an Alchemist NPC is a good idea. Would you want to play one? It doesn't look like you can cast spells. You can just make potions. And blade venom. It doesn't seem particularly interesting. What they're like in combat? No idea. Yeah, look here. Since fighting is, a, is not their normal vocation, their maximum armor class is five. An attacker's clerics. I wouldn't want to play an alchemist, but one as an NPC. Yeah, I've used plenty of those. Dirt by Jake. Oh, this is the game of It from the first episode. Ready for a game of It, Omar? Sure, Irving, I've got It all set up. Okay, Plitkin, to the triangle on the red route. Slud to the circle on the blue route. Challenge call to the Plitkin, plus a privilege bump to your rear, Zeph. Doesn't make any sense to me. Bad move, Omar. I refute the challenge with a rear Zeph sacrifice. That's six points for me, plus you have to withdraw your slud two lines or change routes. Your move. 
I'm sure the expression on my face um, gave away that I don't get the joke. More about the alchemist. Lots of different potions for different levels. Now that's a decent idea. Um, having different level of alchemists available as NPCs. Yes. Yes, of course. Let's go. It, it, it's, a, it's an excuse for a, um, a good little side quest. Go and fetch the ingredients. What sort of giant strength potion do you want to make? Well, you might just need the blood of those hill giants over there. Good luck. Explanations of new potions. Poisons. Ah, D&D &D option weapon damage. Ah, look, weapon proficiencies. Thieves and fighters getting weapon proficiencies at different rates. Um, fighter or thief with a dexterity of 13 or better may take a combination of different weapons. It's ah, good and it's varying weapons. I like that. Look, this isn't variable weapon damage on the size of the creature that a that AD and D had. It's level of expertise with the weapon. But for some of them, look, they don't. You don't gain a normal level of expertise with a dwarf hammer is one d six. Expert is one d six. I hope the weapon gives you some reason for getting expertise. Because look at the difference you get with some of the weapons. A lance, 2d6 up to 2d12. Mm, I'm not a big stickler for balance, but some attempt. Like a, a pseudo balance might be, um, be preferable. Different uh, strength and dexterity requirements for weapons. I don't disagree with that idea. I think that's absolutely fine. It's here, the last D and D supplement. Supplement four: Gods, demigods, and heroes. It was James M. Ward who went on to write Deities and Demigods? It would have all come from this. Five quid, five dollars even. <laughs> back in those days, that was about two pounds, two three pounds. Oh, to be able to get a book for that amount these days. But there we go. That is the end of it. Um, I think that was better than the first first one. Um, I think it looked clearer. Um, I I like the idea of av having the that new class, even if it is just an NPC class. That's absolutely fine. Helping the DMs as well. The interesting stuff about helping them create dungeons with the traps that's great a bit too much fiction for me still um but mostly a focus on D, &D helping the dms and thus giving variety to the game this of course was a period when the game was in development people were learning people were moving from uh, miniatures into imagination based games and of course they will have used miniatures on grids Largely because that's how they did things in those days. I know um, a lot of rules in AD&D had a reference to miniature gaming because there was that um, that original inspiration. In the 80s, we never played with miniatures, but we didn't have many miniatures. We didn't have squared paper. We didn't even think like that because we didn't have those initial um, channels into gaming that these guys did. We went into D and D via endless quest books and choose your own adventure books, f fighting fantasy, that sort of thing. So just reading it off the page and using your imagination was the way we thought, and that was fine. I still like playing that way. I think most systems, most game systems that I prefer, tend to be better when played theatre of the mind. I don't tend to dive into the crunch of the battle mat. I don't really enjoy that. I don't mind playing a strategy game or a war game once in a while, but I would much rather play something very theatre of the mind, very fluid, uh, very visceral as well. I like to have rich descriptions. I like to have 
dynamic games and I like to have quite um quite violent content content. Um I ran a game of Merp at the weekend and some of the descriptions I was running the game and making the combat Merp Merp has got a really good um, crit system anyway, which does help. But being able to give you those, give the players that that, that visceral um, feeling when they're actually fighting, so it actually feels not all comedic, um, but more more desperate, more uh, more of a fight for life. And they were rolling well as well, so I had lots of chance to use the the crits. So. That's the type of gaming I like, anyway. I've, I've wobbled, wobbled on long enough. My eyes are tired. I don't know what it is today. I think I need some new glasses. I've been told I need new glasses for two or three years. Um, so I do apologize for having to have a few cuts in the video. That's just me getting a bit dizzy and having to pull back from the screen. But uh, I do hope you've enjoyed this little uh, browse through um, Dragon Issue 2. I'll do a Dragon Issue 3 very soon. Um, I've been the old geek. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, help the old algorithmy, help the old algorithmy thing, and um, I'll see you in the next video. Ta-da!